The new batch of iPhones come with dual SIM support. Two physical SIM cards only in China. The rest of the world, including India, gets one SIM slot and an eSIM. So what is an eSIM? How does it work? Is it useful? Is it a step back? What's Apple doing here? Well, let's find out in today's video. Hey guys, Ash here from C4 Retech. Cart worker and giveaways, links in the description below. And while you're down there, hit that bell icon, become part of the notification squad, and let us now get started. eSIM stands for Embedded SIM. Now think about it for a minute. You lose your SIM card, you go to a local service provider's store, they give you a new SIM card and tell you it will be activated in X minutes. I'm sure it's happened to all of us, right? So what's happening here? Basically, the, the card they give us, they're gonna connect it to our account. That's all. That's the waiting period. Now what if, what if, instead of Vodafone or Airtel or Geo giving us the SIM card, we already had a card that they can connect to our account. That's an eSIM. The phone comes with a SIM card embedded and the service provider just needs to connect your account with that SIM card. So why should we be bothered? How does this matter? Does it even matter? Well, actually it does. Now, one of the most important things with technology is size. The component sizes keep going down and down. The last flagship phone to support a mini SIM was released all the way back in 2013. Do you remember the flagship? If you do, let me know in the comments below. And in fact, I'll make it easier for you. I'll give you a clue. It came with a Snapdragon 800 chip. That's the last time we saw a mini SIM on a flagship phone. Anyway, the reason brands went with micro and then nano is to save space. That's how important it is. The same reason why we are seeing headphone jacks die, IR blasters removed. Hell, Apple's even done away with the fingerprint scanners. Well, display sizes keep going up. The internal components keep shrinking. Space is at a premium for manufacturers, and eSIM is just 15% the size of a nano SIM. Now, while that by itself is great, the fact that a nano SIM is not only going to take the space of a nano SIM, but the tray, the assembly, the uh, ejector spring, you know, everything takes space. So, an eSIM is much tinier and it really helps save space. Okay, okay, I don't care about size, so does it have any other use? If that's your question, well, it still does. Forget phones with smartwatches and other tiny devices, eSIM helps. Helps them stay connected without having to be tethered to a phone. Now, other advantages include, well, well, it doesn't happen a lot. A faulty seal on a SIM slot can lead to a loss of water resistance. An embedded SIM helps avoid this scenario. Now, if you don't care about any of this, then there's convenience. Switching from one carrier to another is as easy as downloading the carrier's app and buying a monthly plan. No more having to go to a showroom, getting a SIM card from them. At least that's how it works in the US now. Either download a carrier's app or scan a QR code that they give you and the eSIM is configured for use. So if you are traveling and you want to avoid roaming charges, in the future it could be as easy as going to the country, downloading an app, buying a plan and done. Now, let's come back to India. Like I said, Airtel has already uh, uh, begun support for eSIM, Geo does too. And given the iPhones coming out, uh, will not have a second SIM slot in India. Unlike in China, expect others like Vodafone to follow suit and come up with eSIM support soon. Now, eSIM is not without disadvantages. Every time we change phones, we'd have to deal with carriers. Break your phone, borrow a friend's, you'd have to activate the eSIM. It's not as simple as transferring the SIM from your phone to your friends. It should be a simple process activating it, but at least for a while, it will involve calls to customer service, which I'm sure will make my life miserable. Think about it for a minute. There's gonna be a near future where I gotta deal with Vodafone and Geo every week as I swap phones. I'm not, I'm not looking forward to it. But then again, there is a flip side to this. If someone stole your phone, removing the SIM and disabling tracking wouldn't be as easy. So anyway, that's it for eSIM. What do you think about this new technology? Excited to see more Android phones incorporated? Let me know in the comments below. So that's it for this quick video. Share it with your friends and family. Let them know what an eSIM is and how it works. And thumbs up, thumbs down based on how you feel about this video. Subscribe, turn on notifications by clicking that bell icon. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech. And I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.